What's up, Tejas? Today is National Speak Like Shakespeare Day, and it's also his birthday, and we have a professional Shakespearean here. I don't even know if that's a word. Um, Dr. Ann Christensen, and she is a professor and the chair of the English department at the University of Houston. So thanks for being here, Ann. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you say hello or hello in uh, Shakespeare? Okay, great. It, I'll have to put that down in my notes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yay, verily. <laughs> <laughs> I like how I inter or I invited you to join us um, via a text message, and I was trying my best with Jenny's help to invite you using um, words that Shakespeare would use, and you answered me uh, the yeah. same way. So I thought that was really funny, and I was with Jenny when I sent that so she was laughing about it <laughs> so yeah there's a lot of oaths so so it would be like in sooth which we would say for sure like so in sooth it's kind of like in truth or so same with verily like it's a way of kind of intensifying you, you know you bat for sure so that would be a way to say um, yeah just saying yes you um i know that you have organize the um, Shakespeare Festival here in Houston and I don't know if there were any plans to do that again um, anytime soon or um, if you could tell us a little bit about what that <laughs> was like. So oh heck I should have forwarded you this thing my my colleague Laura Churchy so Laura and I I haven't I would love to say I organized the Shakespeare Festival but I didn't so the Shakespeare Festival is usually so there's something going on tonight through the MFA and Main Street Theater, and I can send you the link for you to post if you want. That's, I'm pretty sure it's free. And so it's like a, some kind of performance at 7 p.m. Um, that's, yeah, it is free. So it was fun. So the MFA um, owns a folio of Shakespeare's work. So an, um, one of those items that were, was published after he died. And so wow. they have that, you can go look at it if you want. Um, but anyway, so there's an event there. Okay, one, one thing quick is that um, what, something that we don't think about when we think about talking like Shakespeare or, or talking like that period is the, how much the body was involved. There was a lot of bowing and kneeling and handoffing and curtsying that we, you know, are not practices that we do today, but that was a really key part of inter social interactions. And I think that's one thing I'm happy has fallen away because there was, I mean, we still certainly have class distinctions, but it was really marked on the body in those days. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, I was going to say, we were we ran across an article that had all the words that Shakespeare made up, and I mm -hmm. think the one that really, uh, a lot of them were kind of very interesting, um, but I think the main one that got us talking was Swagger, out of a Midnight Summer, uh, or uh, yeah, Midsummer Night's Dream. So Swagger. Yeah, it was kind of funny because it's like something that's totally, you know, used in today's youth vernacular. And it's like, oh, wow, look, it came out. I don't yeah. think anybody knows that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it. Well, they do now. I, do you know of any words that he did that just, they're like, oh, that's pretty neat. Or how do you even say Oh, it? yeah. Oh, there's gazillions. I mean, less a specific word then the way, so one thing Shakespeare did is that he, and it's not unique to him, other poets, it's kind of a poetic move, is to make a verb out of a noun. And by that, I don't mean institutionalize or problematize or, you know, like that. But so there's a, there's a description of a, of a miser, someone who's hoarding stuff, and the person is said to, he barns his goods. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying he stores them in a barn, he mm -hmm. barns them. Um, Cleopatra says, um, when she's getting dissed from, I don't remember if it's from Caesar, I think. She says, he words me, girls, he words me. Like he's, <laughs> he's 
you know, dissing me with his words. So I think those kind of moves are cool where they're really compressed. Um, well, Anne, thank you for taking a oh, few no, minutes no, to what talk to What a delight. Us. How fun. This is my, my only invitation for this. So next year I'll know it. And we can, <laughs> um, well, ladies, um, I will, you know, get thee to to dinner. So lunch would be dinner. So get thee to dinner. My I will get fine. I will get to <laughs> dinner. Okay. Thank <laughs> you, lady. All right. Nice to meet you, you too. Bye. Nice to meet you here. Bye to good friend Laquita Lewis she is the owner of boxed up gift wrapping and um, she's gonna talk to us a little bit today about how she got her small business um, started and also tell us some secrets of how to wrap gifts and so um, we're starting today with um, kind of a demonstration on how to wrap a gift. We're gonna have a little competition here. Um, she's a professional at this, obviously I am not. So let's see what happens. First, we're gonna start with um, a t-shirt and this is just a regular boys t-shirt. Two different colors, but same shirt. A long sleeve t-shirt and here we go. Okay. Okay, so this one's gonna be yours. Here's wrapping paper, here's scissors, okay. here's tape, whatever you might need. Here, I'll let you cut your piece first and okay. then I'll go. And then just do what I yeah, think what you... is the right thing to do. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, let me see. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do, these Wait, little grid don't lines. Wait, tell me. I know, the grid lines are your friend. Okay, here. So okay. that's where Well, I'm left-handed, so I think I kinda of suck at cutting. But here, I just need to hold, hold on. Let me get it. I need like the whole piece. You never know like how much paper yeah. you'll need. You fully commit, I like okay. it. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna get started while you're Yes, there. please do. Cool. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is the grid lines are your friend. So get the grid lines and cut on them. So it makes it easier for the next person to cut as well. I think I'm just gonna like make a little bag. <laughs> Like, hold on. Trina, that is not how you would give a gift. Hold on, I'm gonna make it look cute. Like, okay, I'm gonna wrap it like a piece of candy. Okay. Oh, your little helper is calling you. Just a second, okay? So, Quita's business is actually based out of her home. So, if you yes. hear a child, it's a child. Yeah. It's he's, her child. He's a toddler. Little person. Wait. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. Okay. I know it looks kind of not cute right now, but I'm going to make it look better. I promise. Yeah, I see the potential in it. Okay. I mean, I feel like if you got this gift from me, you'd be like, wow, this is really cute. It looks like a piece of candy. Mm hmm. So. What you want to do, it's very important, folded size, it just makes it a clean finish look with your um, gift that you're giving to your favorite person. Hold on, my, I know that it doesn't look like anything right now. <laughs> this is like me in the morning when I put on makeup, like, you know, I wake up and I don't really look like all that great, but then I put on makeup and I'm like, oh my God, who's this girl? That's how you're going to be with this gift. Okay, so. I'm, I'm excited to see Just, the magic that you produce from this. This isn't long enough though, but I'll try to make it work. Peter, were you kindergarten teacher before? Because you're very positive and uplifting. <laughs> I did used to be a daycare teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the tone. <laughs> That patient tone. Yes. I try because, you know, are, are you done with this? I didn't want to take oh, yeah, it away. Yeah, from... I don't need it. Mine's okay. going to look beautiful without it. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, God. Just kidding. I'm not sure if he could help you with that bad rep yeah. job. <laughs> Um, it's gonna be cute, I promise. Okay. I mean, oh god. 
<laughs> now you're making me nervous. <laughs> I'm good at this, and now you're making me rethink my whole. Oh, is it because mine's so beautiful? Yeah, well, yeah. like I tell my daughter, somebody has to be second, so don't be afraid to lose. Yeah, don't, exactly, don't be afraid to be second. Because <laughs> I know I'm, I'm pretty good at this, so. I, are you hiring? Because maybe I can join your team. Oh, um, it's a family-based business, so we just kind of do like- I thought it like, was like family. In-house Your kids thing. call me Thea, so. <laughs> they do. I am family then. Yeah. All right, mine's almost done. Are you almost done? Yep. I don't want to rush you. But you are. <laughs> All right, mine's done. Okay, I can't find it. I think it's cute. <laughs> okay, this is my gift for the party. Oh God. Okay, it can't really stand up, but it's okay. It doesn't need to. And besides, what kind of? What kind of person doesn't put a shirt in a box? Like, that's what I want to know. Like, no, because sometimes you just want to save on your resources, you know? So if you put the shirt in the box, then, you know, if you need that box later on at Christmas or anything like that, then you don't have the box to use because you put one shirt in it when you can make it look fun and festive by adding a little pizzazz, so. Well, ours almost look exactly the same, really. Well, I would like to think that mine is like a firecracker and yours is the explosion. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yours is like, I mean, mine is like if you're holding a firecracker in your hand. Yes. And um, you have to go to the hospital after. Yeah, it's fine, everything's fine. <laughs> well, that's what I was going for. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, you know, and then you give a little razzle dazzle and All right. here we go. Okay, well, obviously yours is. But I do like the little flare that you gave it here Thanks. at the top. That's I feel like nice if it was two-sided wrapping paper, it would be yeah. better, but I mean, yeah. we were working with what we had. This is true. So this is mine. This um, is mine. I don't know what y'all think, but let us know in the comments. <laughs> Which one do you like better? One or two. <laughs> How did you um, get started? Well, like tell me a little bit about your background and how you got started. Gotcha. So we met at Sam Houston. I got my degree in criminal justice, minor in psychology. Um, just wasn't my cup of tea, wasn't anything that I was super interested in. So I went on to become a nanny and I've been a nanny probably the last 15 years until I had my own daughter and then she went to school and I put nanny on, nannying on the black back burner <laughs> and I was just sitting around because you know I always like wrapping presents I like a little attention to detail a little bit over the top and um, my husband was like well why don't you start a gift wrapping business and I was like no nobody wants to pay for that like I just like to do this for fun on the side and then he was like well let's try it and see and lo and behold boxed up gift wrapping started um, our first year was last year of course during the pandemic and um, <laughs> oh. It's a hot dog now. <laughs> and this is what happens when you work from home. You have some distractions, which we'll also probably talk about in a little bit. So we decided, hey, let's start a business at the end of the end of the year last year at Christmas, and that's how boxed up gift wrapping became a thing. We had a couple customers last year, super slow, but it was mainly my fault because I wasn't putting my name out there and business out there and just trying to get, you know, all the clients that we could with you know, the resources that we had available. So this year we're gonna try to amp it up a little more and just see what we can get. From. You know, how do you find your customers? Um, how do you like know what to wrap? Um, also like what kind of, like, are there options for gifts? Is there oh, just like a basic? Like, definitely. I wanna know all of that. <laughs> so we are on Facebook and Instagram, and then basically we find customers by word of mouth. You know, just, hey, I wrapped this present for my daughter's friend. We took it to a birthday party, they loved it. We have, you know, a business, go find us on Facebook, find us on Instagram kind of thing, and it just grows like that. And definitely through friends that are telling other friends that tell other friends, and you know, it just kind of grows that way. And my husband too, of course, because he tells everybody in the office, and then it kind of spreads like wildfire. And there are different levels to the wrapping. Like I can show you here with an example. So a basic present would just be, this is your standard present, like happy birthday, Here's your present. Then you're like, well, I think I want to add a little deluxe to it. So deluxe, then you put a little 
tulle on it, and now you have deluxe wrapping. And you're like, okay, you know, not, you're like, well, I think I want a little premium. You know, I'm gonna show off what we did and uh, take it to a party or something like that. So then you add a little uh, greenery to it, or even like with this one, this is actually two different wrapping papers, a ribbon across and then a snowflake, and just kind of to give it a step above the rest, you know, because you can do regular wrapping paper. You can even do a bag, which I'm not against because they are great in a pinch, but I like just to do a little bit extra because people remember, oh yeah, that was a present that she brought and you know, uh, it looked really good and it had whatever inside. So I just like to do a little bit extra to, you know. Do you ever use like different um, things like um, I know that you, we talked on the phone the other day and you were talking about your sister using like comics yes. <laughs> to wrap gifts. Like do you ever use like things that people would not typically think of to wrap? Um, I have not just because I have a love for wrapping paper and I love the colors and I love how you can mix and match stuff. But my sister is very green and she would like to use reusable resources. So she likes using comic book strips. She likes using newspapers. She uses magazines. She uses scarves. She uses fabric. Things that you can reuse and it's not necessarily one and done kind of thing. So yeah, I like that she does that, but it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> if somebody like requested something mm -hmm. special from you, like maybe they were like, hey, I want something using reusable or mm -hmm. I want like a specific color or whatever, like are you able to customize like oh, that? Oh, most definitely. It's easier at Christmas just because there's so much wrapping paper out everywhere, but there are wrapping paper companies and they have beautiful, beautiful paper that is double-sided, has foil on it, emboss, all that fun stuff. But um, I did do a present for a little girl. She had a Minnie Mouse party. So I went and got black and white polka dot paper and I got pink paper as well. And I did this same two-tone uh, wrapping and she loved it. It was super cute. So definitely customizable is a thing. You just would enough notice, of course. Yeah, and you, um, your customer base, are they mostly, you're in the Woodlands area, so yeah. are your customers mostly in the Woodlands area? Mm -hmm. I'm guessing, because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Woodlands Conroe, kind of North Houston area is where we stay because if we have to deliver we need to be able to get it to them in a reasonable amount of time. Would you right. go <coughs> to somebody's house like at Christmas time oh. and wrap all of the gifts? I would <laughs> love to go to somebody's house and wrap at their <coughs> wrap their Christmas presents because I think Christmas time is the crunch time when you're like oh my gosh I have this closet full of presents tomorrow is Christmas kind of thing and let me in there, I got scissors, I got tape, put my music on, and we can just get to rapping and it's not even you a know, thing. You um, know, yeah. actually, your company reminds me of when I used to go to the mall yeah. and they used to offer mm -hmm. gift wrapping services. And, um, you know, I don't think that that really exists anymore. And so I think that this is definitely a service that is really useful for people. Definitely. And that's what I think as well, you know, it's kind of like guacamole. If you want to pay extra for it, it's there. If not, then you don't use it. Like. That's what I'm here for. If you want the extra, I got you. If not, it's okay. We can just, um, you can throw it in a bag, put some tissue paper on it, and call it a day. Yeah, and also, have you ever, I saw on TikTok that people can make bags out of wrapping paper. Like, yeah. have you ever done that? I have. Okay. I have. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> um, the next thing I want to talk about is joining forces with others, um, collaborating, and, you know, I know that we've, Chatted, you are obviously a pretty new business. Um, do you have any like future ideas for collaborating with um, other business owners? Definitely, uh, I would like to partner up with you know boutiques and things like that. Just because, again, at Christmas time, Thanksgiving time, Black Friday sales, people are buying for other people or family members and friends and things like that. And you can go ahead and wrap it while they're there. Then when they throw it in the closet, when they pull it out December 23rd or 24th, they're not like, oh crap, I need to wrap this. It's already wrapped and the tag is on it and you just hand it off to the next person. So I think that's definitely something that we're gonna try to do this year to link up with boutiques or even like pop-up shops that are in the mall and just get that knocked out for people. I hear you keep saying Christmas over and over again. Obviously you really love Christmas, <laughs> but um, you do wrap gifts, gifts for other holidays, oh, not yeah. just Christmas. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Christmas, well, yes, because Christmas is amazing. Um, but weddings, birthdays, Valentine's Day, Easter, make the baskets, you know, just whenever you need something wrapped or boxed up, you can definitely contact us.
Yeah, and I think that you know there it takes a special talent for someone to be able to do this, obviously. Um, and I do not have the patience. Um, I also would never be a kindergarten teacher or a nanny, so <laughs> I just don't have the patience love it. for all of that. Yeah. And I would just rather like hand it over to somebody else. Yeah. Um, are there any obstacles? I'm sure that there's been some that you faced. <laughs> um, and how did you handle those? Um, well, of course, yeah, there's always obstacles. My attitude, I would say, I was hesitant. Like, I was like, no, I don't want to do it. It's okay. It's just something I like to do for fun. I don't want to charge people for something that I like to do. It's just, hey, I'll do it. And then my husband's like, no, we're charging people. We're doing it. It's happening. And, okay, okay. Um, a smile, but I'm really behind the smile. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm freaking out. Um, but it's been good like I have fun doing it it's not bad at all obstacles that we face of course finding the clients or the customers because at first you're like hey I can wrap that present for you <laughs> and, you know just wait and see what they say and then you know it's just a matter of putting yourself out there and not being afraid of rejection or people saying no or anything like that like it's fine you have to be able to take that and just grow with it yeah and I think you know for some people it can be a little difficult to yeah. Um, ask for people's support and I I personally know you and I know that that is kind of difficult for you but um, you are really lucky that you have a supportive husband and Definitely. you know friends that they will be that person that can kind of be your kind of advocate I guess yes. to get you some more um, customers yeah. is um, tell me like the secret to wrapping a great gift like is there a secret because obviously like I need some help <laughs> Um, and how can I improve on my wrapping? Well, you have a good base. You definitely <laughs> have a good base. Um, I would say the secret to a good present is um, your corners. Like corners are important. Like just make sure you smash that corner down and then uh, tape, like good tape makes a difference too. You can get the blah blah tape or you can get the like sticky good stuff that um, and it's clear, so you can't really see it when you put it on there, which is very nice. Um, that's what I would say, corners and good tape. Decent wrapping paper also makes a difference too. There's a couple yeah. stores in town that have good wrapping paper, and of course, the wrapping paper that you can buy online. Yeah, we have this really fun thing, it's called the Texas Trio, um, and so we're going to ask you a few questions. You're gonna okay. pick three of these horseshoes out of the hat <laughs> and um, answer the question. Are you from Texas? How many generations? Um, we are not from, well I am not from Texas. My dad was in the army so we kind of moved around a lot. We've been in Texas the longest. I've been here since third grade I believe. Um, back at Fort Hood and yeah so now I'm bringing my generation here. My husband is from Texas but not I. <laughs> but I like it here, I do, and I'm gonna stay here because I like it a lot. Yeah. Can you talk with a Texas accent? <laughs> I don't think I have an accent, but um, I find there's certain words I say that have a little draw to it, like y'all, you know. Um, there's something, oh, I can't remember the word. I have to think of some kind of word I say. Oh, foil paper. Go get some of that oh to put gosh. on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just certain words that you say that foil you don't paper. think you have a. Actually, until you say it and you're like, oh, I said that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're like, oh, is that me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, hold on. Wait. I want you to, like, use a Texas accent. Like, what other people would probably be like, oh, that sounds so Texas. Y'all come in the house now. Y'all come on. <laughs> so that's me. Uh, Y'all come eat. Y'all come on. <laughs> I do, you just throw y'all in there anyway. It works. Do you own a cowboy hat and or cowboy boots? Um, my head is really big, so I cannot fit a cowboy <laughs> it is hat. Big. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so hats are not a thing for me, but boots definitely. I have one pair. Um, secret, I only wear them when we go to the radio because that's what I feel like that's when you're supposed to wear them. So uh, I know I need to be better about it, but. <laughs> I only wear my boots when You're I go a bad to the radio. Texan. So <laughs> last year they did not get worn because there was no radio. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. They have dust on it. Oh no. Okay. Don't take my Texas card, please. Don't yeah. take it. Yeah, we're it's gonna be revoked. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you can work on that. That's okay. something that you can change. So true. <laughs> true. 
Well, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk to us and showing us um, your beautiful gift, wrapping skills, and um, you know, I think I'm gonna take some of your tips back home with me Definitely. and try to um, maybe become a better gift wrapper. But actually, probably what, I mean, let's be honest, like probably what I'll really do is just like make you wrap all my stuff. Okay. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. And if you can't, if you feel like wrapping is not your thing, just grab the bag. <laughs> Or they have these nice boxes like this too that come pretty and you can just throw up on one there. Like just, yeah. you can do it. I have faith in your ability. Oh, thank you. Yeah. See, that's a good friend. Very supportive. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thanks everybody for watching. And also make sure that you drop in the comments um, which gift you thought was wrapped better. And I'm pretty sure that I'm going to win. Um, <laughs> And also we're going to drop her information down below so that you can check her out and maybe use her services. Thanks. What's up Tejas? Today is National Picnic Day. So um, I'm picnicking right now and like my friend Nick is here with me today and um, we we're gonna talk a little bit about picnics and eat and then we also have so let me show you what we have actually so I have a really amazing salad because I'm a lazy picnicker and I don't want to have to make my own food so I just ordered food which is the new way of picnicking and um, Nick has a banh mi from one of my favorite restaurants here in Houston Heights. Um, and we also have Vietnamese coffees, and also they have the best Vietnamese coffee. I wanted to know, Nick, when's the last time, or the first time you went on a picnic? Like the last good one I feel like was at the Mandel uh, Kermit Park. So if y'all have ever been to Houston, um, which I'm sure a lot of y'all have, the Manil is like one of the hot spots to picnic and to visit. Um, tourists love it and also the locals. So it's like one of our hidden gems. And I'm embarrassed to say I've literally never been there. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> next time on. Yeah, next, next time. We'll have to visit the Manil. Um, <clears throat> well, we're currently in my backyard. Um, Nick said, that if you're not sitting on a blanket, you're not really picnicking, and I disagree. Well, you retorted with a picnic table. I mean, why else would it be called a picnic table? But it's I'm true. still, I'm gonna still, I'm team blanket yeah. all the way. There are, I mean, seriously, why is it called a picnic table if you're not meant to picnic on the table? So, anyway, happy National Picnic Day, and let us know in the comments. What are you taking to your picnic? Where do you like to picnic? And are you team blanket or team picnic table? Thanks, bye. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time, that's all y'all.